I loved being high. I loved having guns. I loved having all the stuff. I loved it. But there were times that 4 o'clock in the morning would come by and I'd say, is this it? Is this all there is to life? Party hardy? Do all this stuff? Did you ever have a guilty conscience, Jack? Nope. Did you ever worry about getting caught? Nope. I just didn't give a rip. I didn't give a rip about myself. Why would I give a rip about anybody else? You're surrounded by people like that, that are 11, 12, 13 years old, 14, 15, 16 years old. You're surrounded by people that are just like I was. Don't want to live, don't want to die. Nothing makes sense. Who cares? I just didn't care. Thanksgiving 1973, the lady that I was with said, let's go to Texas and visit my parents. Okay. So we took our kid and headed out to Texas, San Angelo, Texas, December 3rd, 1973. We're in a bar, had been there most of the day. It was about seven o'clock at night and she said, Jack, let's go back to the hotel and check on our kid because we left our son with a rent a babysitter at the hotel. And even though we were scumbags, we still kind of liked the little guy. Okay, let's go check on the kid. I was all too messed up. We walked out of the bar, she got behind the wheel, I got in the passenger seat, we pulled out of the nightclub, she said, Jack, we picked up a cop. I said, don't worry about it, just go to the speed limit, let's see what happens. She said, Jack, there's another cop behind him, and I said, don't worry about it, I'm not dirty, I didn't have a gun at the time, I wasn't carrying any drugs, just go to the speed limit, it, 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 they might be wondering why, you know, we got Oregon plates, who knows. A couple minutes later, searchlights, helicopter searchlight, Starsky, Hutch, Kojak, and Beretta, all kinds of <laughs> Pulled us over, and what are we? You, riding shotgun, open the door, slide it on your face, and do not move. I looked at all the guns. I said, he's probably got a good idea. I opened the door, I lay down on the, on the Texas dirt, and just stayed there. The first thought that I had, cool. I'm serious as a heart attack. Something new, because I knew at some level of my being, I was 26 years old, I had done everything twice, or so I thought, and I knew there were only two things in my future. Either A, I was gonna get a hold of some bad dope and croak, or B, I was gonna get busted. To the best of my knowledge, I had never been dead before, and I had never been big time busted before. I did some Mickey Mouse jail time, but I had never done prison time. So this was just another day in the life. This is just a new page of a new adventure. This is saddle up your horses. You know, it's gonna be a great adventure, this is great. I lay there, the, lied there, or I was prone in the snow for a little while. I hate the English language. Time out. And may I remind you that Bible quizzing is Bible quizzing and not English grammar. <laughs> anyway, so I, I, was, I was there prone in the snow and they put an over and under shotgun in the back of my neck. They patted me down to make sure I wasn't carrying anything. They brought me to my feet, they cuffed me, they chained me, and it proved the miracles still happened. They found a Texan who knew how to read. He said, y'all had a right to remain silent. Anything you say can move. When I got up that afternoon, it was just another day in the life. I had no clue that for over a year they had our little thing under surveillance. I had no clue that one of the guys I was working with was an undercover cop. I had no clue that they had our phones tapped and all kinds of other stuff. It was just another day in the life. And you and I, I mean, I have no clue that I would get busted that day, and you have no clue when you're going to die. But the Bible says, it is appointed unto all men and women once to die. And after that, the judgment. I get busted. They took me to Tom Green County Jail. They indicted me. They put me on a million dollars bond because Texas had no charges on me. They were picking me up on Oregon warrants, California warrants, and federal warrants, okay? Texas just picked me up. I stayed in jail in Texas for a couple months, then they extradited me back to Oregon. I guess, I don't know if they drew straws or how Oregon got first dibs. They sentenced me to 10 years in Oregon State Prison. While I was doing the Oregon time, California dropped the charges, and the federales decided not to prosecute. I got out of prison on parole, went to Kansas City, went to Bible school, and here I am. Now, those of you that are perceptive have probably figured out that all that stuff is to set the stage for what's really important. And this is the important part. 
I stand before you at the age of <laughs> and tell you this, listen to me, I have never, never, and I try to be careful using that word, I have never been witness to. I have never, BC, before salvation or after salvation, I have never had a human being tell me anything about Jesus Christ. Never. Not before 1974, not since 1974. I have never had anybody who didn't know me or who knew me casually try to share anything about the gospel with me. And you are surrounded by people that have that exact same testimony. Hopefully not in this room surrounded. But in your mission field, how many have been on short-term mission trips? Aren't they wonderful? Life is a mission trip. I get so tired of hearing kids and adults, oh, I can't wait till summer to go to Guam or Brazil or... Your mission field is right here, okay? I'm not dissing short-term mission trips, but life is a mission trip. And if you're not witnessing for Jesus here, you're not gonna do it there. And this is the mission field, first in Jerusalem, first in wherever you live in Washington or Idaho. That's your mission field. Enjoy those short-term things, but life is a missions trip. I have never been witness to it. So how do you get saved, Jack? This is the part. This is why I'm so excited about Bible quizzing, because we're not just studying some philosophy. We're not just studying Shakespeare. I ran across a young woman today, I thought she was a kid, who's willingly, nobody's holding a gun to her head. It's not for a class. She's reading Crime and Punishment, or War and Peace. War and Peace. War and Peace. Willingly. <laughs> and that's, that's Is that where I went to, I went to college, well, you say like, but <laughs> I'm sure he's a great writer. But we don't study Dostoevsky or Kafka or any of the other one. I doubt Shakespeare. The living, active Word of God. Okay? Why am I so excited about Bible quizzing? Because nobody has ever witnessed to me. Except in that jail cell, after being there for a couple of weeks, they found some drugs in the cell. Which is not terribly unusual because drugs are easier to get in jail and prison, any jail, any prison than they are on the street. The unusual thing is they punished us. They took our TV set away. We couldn't watch Sesame Street or Police Story anymore. They took our Playboys away. They took our Louis L'Amour Westerns away. They took our weights away. They took our poker cards away. They took the Monopoly game away, praise God. They took... <laughs> Can you explain eternity, Jack? Monopoly. <laughs> God has given me a wife and kids who love to play. They took all the stuff out, except what the Texas State Supreme Court said they couldn't take out, and that was the religious stuff. So after two or three days of having nothing to do, I went over this pile of books, and I suppose there were King Jimmy Bibles and Living Bibles, and probably a Book of Moron, Mormon, and, uh, you know, probably, probably all kinds. I took a Bible as lit class in college, you know, so I just, I didn't need that junk. And I suppose there were some really deep, important spiritual books like How to Lose Weight for Jesus and Clear Your Complexion for the Savior. And I'm kicking through these books, and there's a little paperback book at the bottom of the pile. It had an American flag on it, and it had the word prison in the title. And I said to myself, Self, you've been busted on 29 felony counts, most of which you're guilty. If they have your sentences running wild, you're going to go to prison for the rest of your stinking life. So why don't you read what this turkey has to say about prison and disregard this science fiction stuff, and at least then you'll probably have some information that will help you survive prison more easily. So I picked up the book and started to read. 